Hello tribe! Good evening! How are you? I miss your faces. I'm back home. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Oh, I have so much to say, so much to share, so much to tell you guys, and so very little time to say it. So I was deciphering through all of the things that I have to tell you guys or to say, what would I say tonight? Because my daughter Bailey is waiting for me to um, hop on a movie with her. I'm gonna pull up the feed so I don't miss any comments because Facebook is glitchy. Okay, um, hello. If you're here, say hi to me. If you're brand new to me, let me know so I can some ca come say hello to you. If you're on the replay, let's do hashtag money. And I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. Um, one of the biggest things that uh, has been on my mind you know, going to the Tony Robbins event. Hi, Jacqueline, thank you. It's so nice to be home. Um, I'm not sure if you guys were tracking with me or not, or who has seen it, who hasn't seen it, but I did sign up for the Platinum Partnership, which uh, the investment for me would be like $120,000. Um, so, you know, like, it's interesting and fascinating to watch and see who says what about those kind of investments. and. I actually um, ran into a friend of mine and, and got to hear like who says what on the back end, the stuff that I don't hear because I'm so focused on who I'm serving. But there's like chatter that happens on the back end and stuff when, when you make powerful moves. So, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I was really recognizing was how bold living this way really is. I mean, like just not even kidding. Like to be in the position I am, right? Like so you know, it, this is no different than how I started and at the level I'm going to now feels no different than the first time I made my first investment in myself and in my business and being like at a position where I was like, I have no idea how this is going to work out. Not one clue. I think people have a story in their head that uh, us entrepreneurs who are doing like really brave things that it's easier for us somehow, but it's really not. This feels absolutely no different to me than it did in the beginning, but this is what I do know. What I do know is we get to choose what our desires are and we get to do really bold, brave moves because as the title suggests, spiritual seek I heard this this weekend while I was at the event and it just really landed with me so big. Spiritual seekers must be achievers because you can't give out of nothing. So it's like the heart centered people that really give a crap, that really want to show up and make a difference on this planet. Like we must be achievers. We must be brave. Like we really have to invest in ourselves and back ourselves and go after our dreams and take risks and be bold and be brave. It's really required for us because how else are we going to serve? You cannot give out of nothing. You cannot give away a dollar that you do not have. Right. And so tonight was like, so here I am going through all these trainings. I invest in the Platinum Partnership. You know, I invest a hundred something, you know, thousand dollars in myself, plus tons of traveling. So it's basically like 10 days a month that I'll be traveling. Plus I'm a single mom with two kids. I run the company in the business. You know, I live here in Florida, so I don't have family here or anything like that. Um, so obviously in my head, I'm like, wait, like I'm walking in being an even better mom. What kind of parent doesn't want to be a better parent? I want to be an even better mom. I want to show up even bigger. You know, my son's getting older. He's a senior. You know, my daughter's going through some stuff at school and you know, I want to be there for my clients and I want to support my clients for even more massive transformation. I want to show up better and more integrity in the business. And there's always a new level of integrity that you can shift into as we learn and grow and can seize and step and, you know, and, and do it even more. So of course, right on the heels of that, making this massive life transforming decision. And now I'm going to be traveling all the world with, you know, Tony Robbins and, and the group of people and stuff like that, you know, the Fiji trips, all those kind of things, um, and learning stuff that my brain is like, who are you to learn this kind of crap? Like in all reality, like I'm starting to hear and learn like some of the business models and all these kind of things on the back end. And, and my story is very much like, who am I? Like, I'm just a girl who runs an online company. I'm not like a real, I'm an, I'm, I am a corporation legally. I'm a corporation, but in the inside, it just feels like I'm just a girl figuring this out, doing what I do. I happen to specialize in teaching people how to organically grow their business online, how to really be themselves, how to own their voice, how to speak to their people, how to create like a, a really awesome tribe vibe like we have here. I mean, the tribe here is so incredible. They're so loving and supportive of each other. And that's what I do. But like, I don't really know jack shit about corporations and businesses. I never worked in a business or a corporation. So I'm like, here's all these like millionaires and billionaires and people who run six, seven companies and have seven figure companies and, you know, like hundreds of employees. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> then there's me. So of course there's like this story I don't belong, but like there's something inside of me that's just like, you will like, nope, you'll figure this out. 
like just like you did in the beginning, just like you always do, you get to choose that you belong here, that you belong at this table, you belong in this room, and I get to choose that. And so I come home, you know, I'm kind of readjusting, whatever, and then I find out that one of my favorite people on the planet, my assistant, um, her son got in a terrible accident, and, you know, she's over there in Michigan, he's in a different state, um, you know, he got life flighted and like actually like jaws of life, is that what it's called, where they take him out of the car, and I saw pictures, and it was, I didn't know, I guess she had sent me while I was at the event, but I didn't see it because I was at the event, um, and, and like, this is why we do what we do, right, like, how amazing is it to be in a position where literally it's just about actually being brave enough and taking chances enough to believe that I get to have, I get to fulfill the thing I feel called to do and that I, I get to be in a position where I can bless someone on my team then I can just pay for her trip for her to go see her son so she doesn't have to worry about that. Like this is the stuff that really matters to us. What if you're actually not a person who just, I just want money because I'm selfish and I'm greedy and that's what it is. What if you're like, no, I want to be able to freely give anytime I want to without having to stress about it. I want to show up so big and push myself and grow and invest in myself so that I'm required to shift to the next level version of me so that I'm a human being who has tons of value to give. I have massive amounts of value to give back, to support people, to love on people, to take care of the people I love, to give away freely, to give, you know, to seriously give and make an impact on this planet. And, and that, of course, we desire to be in a position of power and wealth so that we can take care of people we love, so we can do loving things like, like someone's in a position where they're not able to, you know, go visit their son or they're not able to do something and something tragic happens or, you know, someone's in a really precarious situation. Some, somebody goes after someone, does something bad, and we want to protect them, hire a lawyer or something like that. We get to do that. Like we actually get to show up and we get to be, I, I am a human being with massive amounts of value to give the planet. I'm connected to people that can also serve and love and protect and give back. And I am in a position to be able to give back and serve. Whether that means I'm calling your ass to a high level program and I'm, ca I'm calling you to rise. I've done the work myself. I don't ever ask anyone in my tribe to do something I don't do myself. When I call your ass to more, it's because I call myself to more. It's because I step up to the next level. I do things that scare the shit out of myself constantly. I'm constantly leaping way before I feel ready. I always feel like I'm a fraud. I don't belong here. Who am I to think that I can be a business person? Like it doesn't matter that the business is global. I've run retreats all over the world. My clients all over. It doesn't matter. I'm still human. It still feels the way it feels. And everybody has the choice to contend I could always feel like money is bad, I am selfish, I only care about myself, I don't care about my clients, I'm a bad mom, I don't show up for my kids very well, I should be doing better in all these areas, I should have lost more weight by now, I should be in better shape, I should be able to speak better, I should be able to sell better, I should be able to write copy better, I should do all these things. Everybody has a choice to, to think about those. Or we could lock into the fact that spiritual seekers must be achievers because we want to give. And we don't wanna just give a little bit, we don't wanna tip 20%. We don't want to tip 25%. We want to drop 50% tips. We want to drop huge tips for people that you can just see there's a heart inside of them and like there's something like really beautiful about them. We want to be able to protect the people that we love. We want to be able to show up really big for people when they're in precarious situations. We want to be a human being who has massive amounts of value to give other people like I have something that can support you, that can help you, I can give back to you. There's a value exchange and you're a human being on this planet with massive amounts of value. That is incredible. And then we get to give massive amounts of value to people. And that was something that I really locked in. Like, I keep hearing this thing about like raving fans, this term raving fans. And I was like, eh, it just doesn't really resonate with me. I don't see my people as fans. Like, they're Mandy fans. Like, that is just not how I see people. So I really always ignored that term. I see them as equals. Like, the, this, we're just equals and we decided to be a tribe and I just happen to be skilled at this particular talent that I'm calling you to rise to in the energetic exchange is you, you pay me, I show up for you. Like that, that's how I see it. I don't see it as fans. I think that's kind of crazy. However, I now love the term. It's kind of like when I used to hate the term queen, like embody your queen, we're a queen. Then I realized a queen isn't someone who's like, kiss my finger and feed me grapes and fan me. A queen is someone who shows up for her people, no matter what. She puts her people first. She will rise, she will show up, she will do anything that's required to protect her people in her country, and that's what a queen does. And all of a sudden I was like, I love queen, like, uh, yes, I'm so queen energy, and now I love the term queen. And But before I hated it, so before I used to hate the term, like, um, 
raving fans. But now what I realize, the only thing that a raving fan is, is when you've been in a position, when you have done the work, you've showed up, you've invested, you believed in yourself, you backed yourself, you blocked out the naysayers, you blocked out anyone saying anything, you stopped going to people who haven't created it for advice because you're not gonna get good advice from them. If they have not done it, they cannot give you advice, right? It's just an opinion, it's not advice. So. We clean up that messy behavior, we show up, we go first, we lead the way, we actually get, we do the thing first and then call people to rise to us. And as we do that, track with me for a second, it's so awesome. Now I love this term. All that it means is that you've showed up and you are a human being who has a massive level of value to give to your people, so much so that they become a raving fan because there's like this feeling of like, I can't believe how much you're contributing to me. Like, this is so above and beyond what I thought it would be that I feel this feeling towards you. It's like this feeling of gratitude. It's an exchange of really beautiful, powerful, do life together energy. And that's actually what a raving fan is. I'm like, well, I don't know who named it Raving Fan. It's kind of a ridiculous name, but that's the name of it. That's what's really behind it. Like how incredibly beautiful and powerful is that? That's like such a goal to be like, okay, so here we go. Are you ready? We're going to be a queen who creates Raving Fans. <laughs> if you had told me that three years ago, I'd be like, ugh. like all of those terms would have just been like, ugh. now what I see is you are somebody who shows up, you put your people first. You stop pretending that the things going on aren't a big deal. Like, oh, this thing that I'm not showing up for is not a big deal. Stop making it not a big deal. It is a big deal. And there are massive consequences to not actually backing the things that you said you would do, not being a woman who keeps a word and not actually backing yourself in your dreams. There are big consequences to that. And one of the rude awakenings I got this weekend was outplaying what those are. So I stopped pretending to myself that these small things that seem insignificant, that other people don't pick up on are insignificant. They're not, they matter, right? So. It's actually showing up, being someone who keeps your word to yourself, shows up for the people that you love. You show up big for yourself. You lead yourself to the place where you feel called to go because you want to be a person who has massive amounts of value to give people. Then out of abundance and out of generosity and out of joy and out of the sheer love of your purpose and what you do and because you love people and you want to just contribute in a massive way, you give massive amounts of value and then all of a sudden you have these raving fans and you're a queen with raving fans. So. I, don't, I can't even think of terms that I like any better than that. Uh, and so one of the things that landed with me in such a big way was spiritual seekers must be achievers. And so to me, what that means is the heart centered people by nature. If you're asking, if you're worried, well, what, what happens if I make tons of money and let me know if this is a worry for you. I really want to hear in the comments because I feel like it's a plague that's happening. If I really care about, making money, if I want money, if I desire money in a beautiful home and nice things, if I desire that, then I'm selfish. Like something's kind of screwed up about that. Like I really shouldn't want money and I shouldn't be looking for clients to make money and build clients. And I'm not saying that that's a big part of your thinking. I'm saying it's in there. There's a little piece in there that's in there. That's like you're selfish if you want money, right? And I feel like this phrase just cuts right through that, like that BS. Basically, what I interpret that is as the heart-centered people, those are the people that are gonna say, but what if I become selfish? What if I become greedy? What if I turn into a bad person? What if I actually care more about money than I do about my clients? What if I really just want what I want for me and I'm selfish and I really don't love people and I'm really not serving, I'm really just being selfish building my business? Like only heart-centered good people would ever ask that question. A person who doesn't give a shit about people and just wants to make tons of money doesn't ever ask themselves that question. They don't ever have that little thought nagging at them as they're doing it, ever. <laughs> That's not a thing. Only good heart-centered people think that. So there's your evidence that you are one of the good heart-centered people who really do just wanna make a difference on the planet and thrive and enjoy life and be part of unlimited abundance. Abundance is like oxygen. You, you can have more and more and more and it takes away from nobody. So why not you? Why not tap into that massive amount of oxygen? It's like taking shallow breaths your whole life, whatever, like there's all this oxygen, girl, breathe, like, like give yourself some oxygen. That's really what it is, right? And of course we need you to have that because spiritual seekers must be achievers because you can't get out of nothing. So it's about knowing and understanding that the more you have, the more you will give, the more you have to give. And of course, the safer you feel, the less all this stuff is coming at you, the more confident you feel in yourself, the more you've kept your word to self, the more you've invested and you've taken those brave leaps and you called yourself to rise. You feel really proud of yourself. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how this sounds. I kinda do know how this sounds. You guys can laugh with me, okay? Just love on me for a second. I feel like a rock star, I feel like a badass. Like I just made a $100,000 investment in myself and my business that I said 
a day before that I was gonna do next year. And then I called myself to it within 12 hours and I did it. And now I'm gonna be traveling the world with these incredible people who are heart-centered and making such a massive impact in the world. And, and the stories I'm hearing about their lives and what they're doing and, and the impact that they're making is so astonishing. And I get to be around them. I get to be fed by them and learn by them and learn how to be a human being of value as something back, to, like something to give back to that level. And that feels incredible. So I have so much confidence in myself because I'm doing brave things that nobody can take that away from me. There's nothing anybody could say or do that would ever take that away from me. I have earned the right to feel self-confident within myself because I'm being in integrity with myself and I'm being brave and I'm being bold and I'm backing myself. And yes, there's a huge part of me that wants for a second to be like, oh my God, how's this gonna work out? What if this doesn't work? Like, what if you screwed up? Like, what if what if you show up and you're like a joke and you, like, what if all this stuff is so far over your head you can't learn it? Like, of course those thoughts are there. I just dismiss them because I'm so locked into the fact that no, because when somebody on my team has a son who got in a tragic accident and, and got life flighted to the hospital, I'm gonna pay for her to be there. Boom, it's done. And she's on her way and she's flying there tomorrow to see him because that's the value I want. That's the power I want to have on this planet. So when somebody gets in trouble and somebody's taking advantage of them and I wanna hire the most badass lawyer on the planet to send, it's done, boom, and I send the lawyer. So when somebody goes through a, a situation and they're, um, you know, they, they need support in order to be able to like, I don't know how to figure this out. I can't do this. This is all, and I know, I know when I can, don't worry, I got you. I got your back. I have resources to do it. I have the wisdom to do it. I have the knowledge to do it. I have the financial backing. I have the power to actually be someone who could show up and make a really powerful difference on the planet. Now you cannot tell me that it makes any damn sense that the people with the biggest hearts who want to give back and actually want to make a difference shouldn't be the ones with the power and the financial backing. So if that's true and you're a human being that's ever doubted or been hesitant that it's okay for you to want massive amounts of money and power on this planet, then I'm, what I'm pointing out to you is because you've had that thought that proves that you're one of the good ones, it proves that you're not one of the selfish people who just want everything for me and I'm just gonna sit on a beach drinking Mai Tais and never give back to anyone and I'm gonna hoard all the money and I'm gonna get buried in my grave with all my money and my Mai Tais. It is so absurd, but this is the shit we do. It's ridiculous, but it's just stuff we've been taught from other people. So it's about knowing like, I want to give out of massive amounts of overflow. I wanna take my sister and my mother and my daughter and my niece and I want the five of us to go and stay in some beautiful resort somewhere or some little tiny hut somewhere and I would give them the experience of their lifetime. I wanna let them see the world. I want my mom to have a home. I want my dad to be well taken care of and his stuff to be paid off. I want my team to be well taken care of. I want emergencies to be handled. I want resources to be able to support people. I want protection for everybody I love, my clients. I want the power to be able to support my clients to have massive breakthrough and huge results in their life like this is what I'm going for so if I sit there and think about how freaking scary it is to take 10 days off a month have to do double the amount of work now because I've invested in a huge thing in half the amount of time and or in a third of the amount of time while I'm a single mom of two kids in a state where I have no family here and I've really locked into you know other pieces of my life that I'm gonna show up bigger for that would be ridiculous I'd be like nobody does that that's insane if you saw the numbers and you saw the, the like time frame, you'd be like, that's nuts. Nobody on the planet would tell me to do it except for the people that have done it. Those are the only people on the entire planet who would say, yes, do it. Nobody else would ever say that. It's insane, but I don't focus on that. That is not what I focus on. That's ego, you're a light worker, this is your calling. Yes, I love it, Mandy Perry. Hi, Dawn. Makes so much sense. Yes, yes, yes. So here's the trick. The trick is for us to not focus on what we could lose right now. Yes, I could lose 100 grand. I could be embarrassed a little bit. I could realize I'm not smart enough to figure this out right now. I invested too early. Um, I'm socially awkward. I didn't learn how to become friends in the group because I always say all the things instead of holding back like normal people. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Maybe like my kids missed me when I was gone. Oh, there's probably 27 other stories that I could go on. Or I could stay locked into what it feels like to send my team to see her son, to pay for the lawyer to protect the person I love, to pay off the stuff for the people I love, 
to be in a position of power to protect the people I love, to have the skill sets to be able to support my clients to another level, to have the value as a human being, to be able to give back in massive amounts of ways and be a queen energy who shows up powerful for her people and has the ability and the skill set to do so while I'm surrounded by massive amounts of other really powerful, incredible people and I'm well-connected human being who knows how to give back to them because I'm so valuable as a human being. I have that much to give that I can actually have something to give back to that level of people. That that's the level I have to show up on this planet. That's what I stay locked into. And then when I stay locked into that, there's this fire inside of me that's just like, I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out, but I will figure it out. That's it, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen, end of story. It always has, I always have showed up. I did it in the beginning when I was so locked into my kids will never be in a welfare line like me. They'll never experience what it feels like to be in a fucking welfare line. It's not happening. And I was so locked into that, it was just like fire coming out of me. And now it's just a new level. And there's been all these levels in between, and now it's a new level of what I'm locking into. And that's it. That's like the big, and, and so when I read this, spiritual seekers must be achievers because you can give out of nothing, I thought, it really wraps everything into one. Like if the story is that we should be giving, we should just be helping people, that weakens people, that does not strengthen people, and you know it. You value what you work for, you value what you put your money behind because that's the exchange on this planet. If before it was, you know, cows and corn, I've heard that, it's such a perfect analogy, like, you have cows, I have corn. I'm gonna give you some of my corn if you'll give me some of your cow later when you butcher your cow. Everybody was like, yeah, that's fine. All of a sudden when it's money, it's like, no. It's the same thing. Just pretend your money is corn. Draw some corn on your money and then call it a day, right? I have an a depression and I try to live in love. I feel I'm gonna send you love, sister. So here's the key, here's the thing. I was depressed, I, like I spent two weeks in bed. I was on antidepressants for two years. This, like literally what we're talking about right now is the way out of depression. Uh, I was on antidepressants and still depressed. And I guarantee you know people that are on antidepressants that are still depressed because so many of them are. Why? Because when we're self-focused on what our life is like and our problems and our worries, we get depressed. I felt like a human being who couldn't protect my children and who couldn't show up and do what I needed to do in order to have the impact I wanted to on the planet let alone even for myself or my own children. Like, how, how am I gonna do it for the planet? I can't even do it for me and my own kids. I could barely put food on the table for them. And I was depressed because I was so focused on me and my life. And the only thing that ever needed to happen was for me to get off of my circumstances, which is incredibly hard when life is really hard. And when you've gone through a lot of trauma, I'm not saying it's easy, it's freaking hard. It took me years to figure out, but this is it. We get off of our own circumstances and we start to look up on who we can support and who we can serve. And if you have a penny to give, you give a freaking penny. If you have two seconds to give, you give two seconds. If you have the smallest amount of wisdom to give, you give the smallest amount of wisdom. And if you just have space and capacity to listen to people, listening is the highest form of love. It's, it's an act of love to listen. It's a powerful act of love to you to just give your time, energy, and attention to someone and just listen to them and what they have to say. And there's so many people out there, there's never a lack of people for us to love on and serve. And we get off of ourselves and our circumstances and we get locked into something that's beyond us, something that calls to us, something that lights us up, something that really matters to us. And we just start serving and loving people, saying hello to the, the postman. Like, I'm such an introvert, you have no idea. I'm like the don't talk to me girl. Like, boop, I'm gonna put my hoodie on, like, or I'm gonna put like sunglasses and, and a hat on. Like, I'm the do not go in public and talk to me girl. And I remember just starting out, just like say hello to the, you know, the postman and like ask him his name and, you know, like maybe, oh, is he married? Does he have kids? Does he have a kid in college? And maybe just try to remember the name of the college his kids goes to and maybe just check in with him like, hey, how's Johnny over at university, right? Like, okay, just start practicing there. And maybe like say hi to the neighbor when they're walking their dog. Maybe, you know, like uh, give a gift to someone who's going through, like send some flowers or, you know, send a gift to someone who's going through a hard time or just, Kind of think about how other people are feeling and what they're doing and how can I be a blessing? Kind of notice the person that's working really hard and, and give them an extra big tip. Just tuning into like how in any way can you love on people and support people and be connected to people and, and show like let life excite you again. That's the, that is it. Hi Stefan, how are you brother? Hi Ruth. Yay, everybody's popping on. Who else is here? Hi Lee. This is, and I know, I mean, you know, I heard it while I was depressed. Um, Hi Maddie. I heard when I was depressed, I heard that serving is the cure, but I couldn't really hear it. So I understand if someone's going through a depression or you know even just feeling flattened down, it's like you don't hear it. It's like it doesn't make any damn sense because we're so self-focused in that moment because we're in so much pain or we're just feeling so like, what's the word? 
um, when you feel like you don't have the power to do what you need to do. Um, why can't I think of that word? Powerless, <laughs> I think that's the word I'm going for. You feel so powerless in your own life. And God forbid we start to believe that anybody would be better off without us. That's when you could slip into suicide, right? I've attempted suicide twice in my life. And that's how it happens because we start to we start to feel so powerless that we actually end up slipping into a place where we believe that th that life is better off without us, that we're a fraud, that we're not a force for good. Like when I was at this event this weekend, um, you know, there was one of the chanting things we said was like, I'm a force for good. And I just started bawling because when I grew up, you know, like, uh, you know, me and my family are super close, but there was a lot of stuff going on when I was a kid. My parents were going through hell. And, um, you know, one of the things that was really drilled into me was I hurt people. If like, if I try to look pretty, I'm hurting women. If I, um, you know, if a man likes me, then I'm making him sin. So I'm hurting him. If I, um, you know, if I'm because I had big breasts or um, any of those kind of things. It was like, I'm, I'm hurting people. And the message was always like, you're hurting people. You're causing men to sin. They're gonna go to hell. You're causing women to be jealous or pain. They're gonna go, like they're in pain, you're hurting them. So the message was always like, I hurt people. And I didn't even realize like still, there's still layers and I'm sure there's more and more layers I'll go through, but underneath there's like this fear that I'm hurting people. This fear that if I'm, if I'm really big or bright or if I have power, if I have money that I'm gonna hurt people or like, yeah, you think that you really love people and want to help them, but maybe you're really secretly just selfish. Maybe you just want everything for yourself and it just sort of seems like you want to help them or you do want to help them, but you want the money more. Like these are the stories that try to pull at me because of those things that were taught when we were kids. And if we don't, like if we stay focused on those and like, what if that's true? What if that's true? What if that's true? We just make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like, it doesn't go away. We get to just literally like leave it alone. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to like, go reach down to some root and pull it out and do all these things. You don't have to do any of that shit. All you do is get focused on what you want to be, who you want to be, what's the impact you want to leave, what do you want to do, how do you want to feel, what, what kind of things do you want to be able to do in your life, and, and how, do you, how, do, how do you want people to feel when they have a, a touch point with you? When you hop on a Facebook Live with me, when you're just here hanging out with me right now, how do you feel when you leave? I'm locked into that. I, want, I know how I want you to feel. I'm aware of how I want you to feel when you have touch points with me. That is part of my purpose and who I want to be. And it's part of what gets me out of bed in the morning. It's part of what causes me to be like, no, I will make shit tons of money. I will make shit tons of money because I get to support you better when I do. Because when I'm in that place where I'm well supported and taken care of, when you feel good, you do good. And I want to do good for you. I want to do so much good for you. I want to do so much more than I do. I want to be so like I give everything I have, but I want that to be so much more. And I know the way to get there is to be well supported, well taken care of. So you'd think after making like a hundred and let me hold on, what's the actual number? Thirty thousand plus eighty-five thousand, whatever that is, so like a hundred and fifteen thousand. Um, you'd think after investing one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars coming home, I would kind of contract a little bit, maybe try to clean up some numbers and not spend so much money. No, I did the exact opposite because it's the exact opposite that works. And I feel like this is a really vulnerable thing to talk about with you guys, but I'm, I, I just, I would kill for somebody to be talking about this stuff. So I could have gotten a taste of it before I was going through it. So the first thing, the first thing I did when I come home is lock in support. So I have like, okay, what's my, my weekly coaching um, to lock in. I made sure that I had food delivery coming so that the food is there. I locked in accountability for me doing my working out. I went ahead of time and, you know, got all the planning for the, all the, the uh, traveling that I'm gonna be doing, getting someone to make sure that that's being taken care of for me. Like I pulled in a whole bunch of stuff to make sure I'm being well taken care of because I'm the person who just made the investment and needs to feel good. It needs to be on my A game and on fire and lit up and excited about what I do, which means I need to have all the time and space that I need to be able to be focused on uh, what lights me up, what I'm here for, what am I doing here for you? How am I, transforming and calling you to that next level consistently and how am I serving my people what do they need what can I do better and I can spend my time there because that's what matters to me and as I do that of course I will make all this happen how could I not there's so much drive and so much depth in there and this is literally by the way if this is super resonating with you like you want to be tapped into something that calls you to that level so that the fear stuff that comes at you you get to just dismiss it because it's in like in comparison to what is driving you the fears feel like this big there's just like, whereas before the fears felt this big and you're like, well, I'm this motivated, but the fear is this big. If you want to reverse that and you want to be locked in like this and the fear feels really small, that's what we're doing at the live event, the 22nd and 23rd. 
Um, so just let me know if you're interested in that. We do have a couple spots open for that. That's in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, but here's the deal. The deal is the old stories of why talking about money is bad, why wanting money is bad, why having all of the things that make you lit up and excited and feel on fire and feel good, that those are good because we need the people who want to serve and want to give back and want to make a difference and pay for their parents' stuff and take their brothers and sisters on vacations and give their kids a life that they never had and be debt free and have beautiful homes and teach other people how to do the same and shine their light really bright all over this planet and travel and become well-traveled and leave your energetic footprint all over the planet so that you're just creating healing everywhere. We need those people in positions of power financially backed and feeling really good and lit up, which means you deserve to have tons of support. And the last thing that you wanna do is actually pull back or, or crunch down. It's the people like you, when you're locked into what matters for you, it's about expansion and flow and letting your purpose come down and actually come through you, letting it live through you and not getting all blocked up and stuck in the way like you're not a vessel to be used for good on this planet. We are here as vessels of good. Like you're a woman or a man who's gonna do massive amount of good on the planet. You're gonna fuck some shit up, but it ain't gonna matter. It's not. It's just not gonna matter at all, right? It's really not. I can't even tell you how many things I've screwed up and it just doesn't matter. Hi, Liana. You're welcome, Elizabeth, girl. I'm just sending you love. I've been there. There's so many people in our culture there. I mean, just so many people. And um, it really is about serving. I'm telling you, when you can step away from the things that are scaring you and beating you up and feeling alone and isolated and feeling like you can't do what you need to do, like that's a depression is a feeling of this is what needs to be done and I can't get that done. Like that's really the essential like bottom, like you, you don't have the control to do what you need to do and it feels so incredibly painful, the way we get out of that is by serving other people, focusing on people, like what small thing can I do? Can I go work at the soup kitchen? You know, can I just, you know, talk to my neighbor or make her feel really beautiful about like, you know, about how she looks or if she lost some weight or if her dog's really cute and she loves her puppy or whatever. It's like the smallest things can make such a big difference. We're meant to love and we're meant to do this hopelessness. Yes, thank you, Tara. That's the word, hopelessness. Thank you. I was trying to think that the whole time. Hi, Jennifer. You're so amazing. Thank you for sharing this, Mindy. Love you. Oh, Gina, I love you too. Oh, Amy, you guys are amazing. The, okay, can I just point out for a second? Thank you for the compliments. I so well received those. And Gina and Amy and anyone else who mentioned that, the reason you're feeling you're amazing is because all that's happening is there's a piece of me right now that is reflecting a part of you that you like. This, that's it. It's just like, this is resonating with my soul right? It's, it's actually not me that, that is like what, what you're sensing is the part of you that's resonating with what I'm talking about, which all that means is you are called to this. Like that's the, right. That's why I say hashtag together. We're just meant to do this together and really go out there and make such a big difference in the world. I've been waiting for this. I can't believe I missed the first 26 minutes. <laughs> well, you can go back and watch the replay, Diana. Oh my gosh. All I've done all day is feel guilty if I really think about it. Like when I've invested in coaching, while wow, you're so freaking brilliant. I, this is the human condition. This is like literally what we're going through right now. That's why, like when I saw this phrase, I wrote it down in huge letters in my book and I was like, share this with the tribe. Spiritual seekers must be achievers. So when we feel guilty taking the time that we need for ourselves, nope, screw that. We must be achievers. When you feel guilty investing in what you need for you to be called to more, for you to be committed, for you to get the support that you need, nope, spiritual seekers must be achievers. When you feel guilty about purchasing the thing that makes you feel really excited and lit up or, or you know, investing in the thing to help you look your best, investing in the thing to help you have high energy or um, you know, a reminder of something like you know, getting to bed really well, buying that new mattress for yourself, really taking good care of yourself so that you're thriving the best that you possibly can, using your time, your mental energy, your finances to back you, to back your dream, to back your state of well-being. We must, like some, shit got massively backwards by us feeling like it's selfish to take care of ourselves. As if on any level, what we want reaching down to help us when we're in our time of need is some broke, tired hand. That's not real. We don't want a broke, tired hand helping us. If I'm getting my ass kicked and some shit is really going down in my life, I want somebody in a position of power with financial backing to reach down and help me and love on me. That's real. It is what it is and it's available for everybody. It's, there's no reason somebody couldn't have this. But we gotta start chopping up these stories. We gotta let them go, this guilt bullshit, these stories that I'm bad if I want money, that I'm bad if I take care of, my, I'm selfish if I take care of myself. No, and, and this is what really helps me. 
when I get lost for a second, because I do, I, I get, I, oh, I'm so tempted to beat myself up all the time about this kind of stuff. I've learned to just dismiss it consistently, but this is the thing for me, right? Like I'm selfish, I'm bad, I'm hurting people. That is my deepest fear. My deepest nightmare is that I'm hurting people. Like just by existing, I'm hurting people. I'm too big, I'm too loud, I'm too much. I'm, I, I give away too much information. I say too much behind the scenes things. I'm, I talk about depression, I talk about suicide, I talk about money, like I shouldn't be doing all these things. I'm too triggering, I'm gonna hurt people. Right, like that's the deep story. So when I get confused about it, I just ask myself, if this were Bailey, and Bailey was 30 years old and I was 90, we're not 30 years, are we 30 years apart? Yeah, we're 30 years apart, I snailed it. <laughs> yeah, we're exact, that's funny. I didn't even realize we're 30 years apart. So she's 30, I'm 90. She's literally in this position, running her business, about to bring her legacy and purpose to the world. She's about to scale to the next level. I mean, I'm, I, tonight I'm gonna to be doing a recording of my life right now. This is how much money I make, this is what I weigh, this is what my house looks like, this is what my beliefs are, this is where my business is at, this is sort of, I'm gonna, a whole thing of my life because a year from now I know it's going to be, I can't even like, I, I can't even imagine, like I literally can't imagine. I have some wisdom now because I've done this a couple times and I know how rapidly everything changes and I'm really excited about it. So I'll just ask myself, if Bailey were 30 and I was 90 and she was going through this, what would I want her to believe and feel and do for herself or for other people or how would I want it to look? Uh, can I just tell you how much bullshit I cut right through when I do that? Like, oh, I'm a bad person for wanting to thrive, but if it were my daughter, no, I demand that she be able to thrive. You know what I mean? Like, it really does just cut through the bullshit. Like, what would you tell your daughter? What would you tell your niece or nephew or your little sister? Like, what would you tell somebody you really love? What would you say to them? What would you want them to feel? What would you want them to experience? Would you want them to have all the travel they want, have the support that they need in order to feel well taken care of? Do you want them to feel important? Do you want them to feel loved and worthy? And you know, uh, do you want them to feel successful and have self-esteem about themselves? Do you want them to really go for it and dive into back their dreams? Like what would you want for the people you love? Oh, we just cut right through all the bullshit. It's really amazing. Yes, I almost promised something that I would actually cause me to retract. I've been getting so much positive feedback last two weeks. What was I thinking? Thank you. Yes, we don't just dismiss the contraction. That's what most people do, right? But oddly enough, a contraction leads to a contraction leads to more contraction leads to more contraction. Actually, an expansive step you would think if you've never done it would cause you to contract after, but it doesn't. Expansion leads to more expansion leads to more expansion leads to more expansion. So when you make a, ba a bold move and you back yourself, it just continues to open up that next level version of yourself where you just continue backing yourself if you choose to use that momentum. We do need more people with good hearts to be in positions of power. Can, okay, so can we remember that when that voice comes along saying you're not supposed to want money? No, you can't spend money on that thing for yourself. No, you can't go take a nap. No, you can't, you know, take that have that environment that you really desire. No, you can't tell that person, I don't like that, I like this. You can't be clear about your needs and your desires. You can't, you can't, you don't be a diva. Don't be, you know, money hungry. Don't be selfish. Don't be, don't be, you know, dramatic. Like, huh, huh. It's so ridiculous, it's so gross. It doesn't even make any damn sense when we think about it. If we were just to sit and think about it logically for a second, it makes no damn sense whatsoever. You cannot call someone to rise to something you have not given to yourself. And you cannot love someone until you have loved yourself to that level. You cannot give something you do not have that's not real. So you cannot teach people to thrive and be happy and be in massive state of abundance or to feel worthy of themselves. And you cannot give someone a sense of feeling deeply, unconditionally loved. Do you know what it feels like to be around someone that you know loves you unconditionally? You cannot give that to people if you do not first give that to yourself. You do not forgive yourself. Let it go, trust yourself, back yourself, love yourself unconditionally, enough to give yourself the things that you need to thrive and feel really good and allow yourself to go after and have the things that you really want in life. Because you cannot give something you don't have away, you just can't. Yes. Should be 60 if you were 90. Thank you, Jennifer. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70. yes, you're so right. <laughs> Bad math. I was like, wow, I nailed it when I was just not even trying. <laughs> That's even better that I said that afterwards. <laughs> oh, so good. The randomness that comes out of my mouth never ceases to amaze me. I'm now locking into the fact that whatever I really want that makes me feel excited and let up is what I'm meant to have and give myself permission to get it. It motivates me even more when I think about what... Ah. Here's the thing I was doing earlier. 
I was listening to a uh, like a audio training and one of the things that had me do was just do this simple little thing, right? Like this, I want you to think about what it feels to think about your to-do list. Like just real quick tune into how it feels. Like, okay. Calvin needs this medical thing. Bailey needs this medical thing. I got to check in with the two dentist people. I got to follow up with the school. I have a meeting with Bailey's school. Okay, I got this and this and this with the team. I got this with the travel stuff. I got this for my own personal stuff. I, I was like, Ugh. right? Like instantly I feel like, oh, oh my God, like you're behind. Well, you're screwing up. You need to do better, Mandy. Like that's the feeling I have, right? And then, and it's just a to-do list. Then they said, now I would like you to think about why you're doing any of this. What is life going to feel like? What is, what is the result going to be on the other side? So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go be, I'm going to, I'm going to be in Bali with Bailey and Calvin and we're going to be having morning massages and I'm going to look at Calvin on my right and Bailey on my left and we're all going to smile and laugh at each other while we're getting massages and, and there's someone cooking breakfast for us and I get to go show them the mountains and the culture and the people and, and how do we serve and how do we love and how do we get back and teach them the difference between throwing money at people and serving people because in Bali throwing money at people actually doesn't serve them. They're content with the life they live and when they have such a drastic increase and go back to the way they live, which they can't really break out of, there's a system there, uh, that doesn't feel good for them. So how do we love people differently than just throwing money at them and, and like, oh, I just envision that. And then I envision my clients having these powerful breakthroughs and these results and me having even higher level skills than I have now. And I envisioned being able to like celebrate paying off my dad's new home and, and just all these things I just pictured. And this is what life is gonna feel like. And my live events where I'm just like hugging my clients and we're crying together and I'm watching people break through and we're celebrating them and we're just cheering on. And, and I'm like, whoo, how do I feel? Oh, I feel like I could crush the world. I feel like I could take on everything. Then why the fuck are we focused on our to-do list? And I was like, oh my God, that's genius. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Which is something I'm now going to implement doing with my clients, of course, because I was like, that is genius. You just feel the difference in your body between I have to do all these things and this is what lights me up. This is why I'm doing this. And then be like, cool, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Don't even worry about the do-do list. Just What's the first thing I'm gonna do? I don't know if they said that and that I stopped right at that part. I didn't listen to anything else, but I was done. I was like, nope, I'm on fire, let's go. I'm ready to go conquer the world right now. And it was just like, great, what's the one thing I need to do today? Okay, make sure this and this and the, the, these are like the top three things to get done today. And the rest of the to-do list didn't fucking matter. And I know that as I just keep tapping into that energy over and over and over, you just keep showing up. But it is a skill to learn to remember that in the moment. It's a skill to be around other people who live that way. Um, you know, like these are all choices that we make that'll affect our life. If we're hanging out with people who are just checking off the to-do list and like, look at me, I'm so busy all the time. And oh, I barely got sleep because I'm so busy and this is how they live. And it's like, I have to do this or else something bad's gonna happen. You're going to think that way and it's going to shut you down and drain you and you're not gonna feel lit the fuck up and you're not gonna show up the same way. And you are sure as shit not gonna do crazy bold things like join in the Platinum Partnership. It's just real, right? Like we're not gonna do bold, brave things like that because we keep telling ourselves you have to do this and this and then we break our word and then we're beating ourselves up. Like, why are we beating ourselves up? Because that's the wiring that's there. Because you don't want to forget, because you're a badass and you're not going to be told what to do. And when even you tell yourself, I don't want to do that, you're not going to. And then you're like, why can't I keep my word to myself? Because you don't want to. And your soul is like, no, death. Uh, like you're the wiser part of you is like, no, that's not how we do life. That feels horrible. You don't have to live that way. It gets to feel like this. <laughs> That is what it is. Does this make sense? Oh my god, I love you guys so much. Okay, I'm gonna go out and hang out with my daughter now. I just wanted to pop on and I have so much more to share with you guys. But that is it for now. Um, please, if you're feeling hesitant, I've had a couple people reach out to me feeling like they feel like maybe they don't belong at the live event. You belong. I know how it feels. I just went through it myself and I was like, Oh, like three years ago, I'm on welfare and these people are billionaires and they have like seven companies with like hundreds of employees and it's like, you know, me and my nine people and like I'm three years in, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know what a FIN is or FI, FI something. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is, I just learned what a SOB is. <laughs> like, and I'll learn, I'll adjust, I'll figure it out. Like it is what it is. And I don't know, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, it doesn't matter. It was like that thought did not feel good so I let it go. I'm telling you, if you're hesitating at coming to the live event on the 22nd and 23rd with me, please come, let me hug you. You belong, I want you there. I don't care where you're at, I don't care what your pattern is. I don't care if you're in a state of depression or you're absolutely crushing life going to the next level. We all do the same work. It's the same work, it doesn't matter. Whether you're stuck scaling to that next level or you literally can't get yourself out of bed, it's the same damn work. 
human is human is human and it looks like what it looks like whether we're stuck going to the next level or we're stuck getting out of bed it doesn't freaking matter it's all the same work and we're just going to love on each other we're going to fill our souls together and we're going to break through and we're going to get some massive amounts of transformation done at this event and i happen to have a big huge special surprise for everybody so i'm literally not telling you what it is but i'm quite excited about it it transformed itself over this weekend so i didn't even know i was going to do it until this weekend and now i know so I'm very excited about it. PM me. Um, the investment is 997, um, and that covers access to the event. Um, and then we're staying at the Westin in Sarasota. The Westin Sarasota is what it's called. Um, or you can book nearby there. And then you know it's just the flight getting there and the food. And then the 997 covers the 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 event itself. Um, so if you have any questions at all, just reach out to me. PM me. I want you there. You belong there. I cannot wait to get to know everybody better. I absolutely love my tribe. I always love the people that I meet there. Um, and that is it. Um, hopefully this served you guys tonight. This was some huge ahas and breakthroughs and just reminders and and things that I'm just genuinely deeply passionate about. So I hope this served you tonight. If anything came up for you, let me know below. If you feel like this serves somebody, um, you know, tag them in the comments if you feel like somebody else would love this message. My intention is always just for people to get loved on, for us to connect. You can tag them in the comments. Feel free to share the video on your page. That always supports. That's how I build my business. You know, if I don't do ads. I don't do... I will someday. I can't even imagine. If my business has blown up this much, just doing organically, just doing life together and having incredible people who are willing to share the videos or tag people and, you know, tell their friends about, you know, the support that they got or, you know, leaving these incredible testimonials, that, all that kind of stuff. That's how my business is run. So yeah, I'm super grateful when you guys do that. And sometimes it just gets to be that easy. <laughs> like everyone thinks it's crazy that my business has gone this far organic. Like the first year we're in global organic, but that's for the love of the people like you guys. Like we really just do life together. And every time we serve someone else, we support someone else, it comes right back around. And so we all just thrive together and that's how we thrive together. That's what it is. That's why the tribe is like this way. Thank you. I like your energy. I live in Denmark and going to sleep. Oh, have a great night, Elizabeth. It's nice to meet you. I'm glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. Um, everybody else, have a great night. Let me know if you need anything and just PM me if you're interested in coming to a live event. I love you so much. I will see you guys tomorrow.